Hi everyone, in this video we'll be taking a closer look at the topic of cellular respiration. Let's take a look at two different ways that we can summarize this important process. First we'll discuss the chemical equation. C6H12O6 is the chemical formula for the compound glucose. O2 is the symbol for the element oxygen. H2O, this is a product of the process, that is water carbon dioxide, CO2, and energy. Uh, we can see that before, or to the left of the arrow, these are the reactants. These are the things that we have before the process occurs. After the arrow, to the right of the arrow, these are the products. These are the things produced or made by the reaction process. Uh, you'll also see that I've added coefficients in these three locations. This is to write a balanced chemical equation. We need to do this because in a chemical reaction process it's not possible for atoms to be created, it's not possible for atoms to be destroyed. So by doing this we keep the number consistent throughout. You can see that there are six atoms of carbon in a molecule of glucose. By producing six molecules of CO2 we're not creating carbon, we're not destroying carbon. The same is going to hold true for the other elements. We're keeping their numbers equal before and after after the reaction process. The word equation for respiration simply is that glucose and oxygen react to form water, carbon dioxide, and energy. In the next few slides we'll take a closer look at the important molecules for the process of cellular respiration. Let's start by talking about the molecule glucose. This is a six carbon monosaccharide, so it is a sugar, it's a carbohydrate, with a chemical formula C6H12O6. Here's one representation of a glucose molecule. Here's another representation. In this representation the black spheres represent carbon atoms. Red is for oxygen, white is for hydrogen. So you can actually see that these match up pretty well. Here's a carbon that is this location right here. This oxygen is this atom right here. This carbon is located right here. This carbon is this carbon right here. And we can see that there are two hydrogens here and here represented by this. And the OH is the oxygen and hydrogen group right here. Um, the dashes between atoms here or the uh, lines in between the spheres here. These are indicating a chemical bond, a covalent bond, which is sharing electrons between those atoms. The next molecule that we'll talk about is oxygen. Oxygen is an example of what we call a diatomic element. That means that in its elemental form, oxygen is found as two atoms which are bonded together. Uh, in the case of oxygen, they're held together by a double covalent bond. Uh, this is the type of oxygen that's flying around in the air that we're constantly breathing in to drive our processes of cellular respiration. Next, let's take a look at carbon dioxide, or CO2. We can see three different representations here. We have a central carbon atom, which is double bonded to oxygen atoms on either side. This is a linear molecule. Uh, here we're seeing a ball and stick model with the gray sphere representing the carbon, red spheres representing oxygen atoms. Here we have a space filling model. Now, carbon dioxide is a waste molecule. It's a product of cellular respiration. In our blood, it actually reacts with water to form H2CO3. That's carbonic acid. Now, that carbonic acid can regenerate CO2, and that's um, in our lungs, and that's what we're going to be exhaling so that we're getting rid of that waste product. Next, let's take a look at a water molecule. Uh, so we have an oxygen atom right here bonded to two hydrogen atoms, and we notice that bent shape that water molecules always have. Uh, water is going to diffuse from our blood into our lungs. It's exhaled along with carbon dioxide. So every time you breathe out, you're breathing out carbon dioxide, you're breathing out water vapor. Another important molecule is ATP. We also talk about uh, ADP along with that. ATP is an energy storing molecule. This is a molecule that can release energy immediately whenever cells need it. So ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. A ATP molecule includes an adenine, a ribose sugar, and then three of these yellow shaded phosphate groups. So here is an ATP molecule. You can see that to release energy for cellular work, the ATP will be split into a what's now called an ADP molecule. So the adenine, the ribose, and now two phosphates. So that's the D diphosphate plus a free 
phosphate. Uh, this phosphate could be reattached to the ADP molecule to regenerate ATP. That process would require an input of energy. So when ATP is broken down, that's the forward reaction here, that produces ADP plus a free phosphate plus energy. If you have ADP and free phosphate and you have energy to invest, you can reform ATP molecules. A couple other important molecules to know about for cellular respiration include phosphocreatine. Here's a molecule of phosphocreatine. When this is uh, broken down to form creatine, a phosphate would be removed. This can actually help to generate ATP molecules. Or the reverse process, creatine using ATP can generate phosphocreatine. Phosphocreatine is actually stored in your muscles. When sprinters start a race, the majority of the energy for their initial output in the race is actually due to the breakdown of, of phosphocreatine. That gives the runner about six to seven seconds of energy. Another molecule that we need to know about is lactic acid. And we'll take a, a closer look at lactic acid here in just a moment. But you've probably heard this if you do any exercising or if you do sports because lactic acid can be produced by your muscles if you're exercising anaerobically. Now we'll take a look at the mitochondria. This is the cell organelle responsible for the process of cellular respiration. Some key parts of the mitochondria, it does have two membrane layers. It also has its own DNA. Uh, both of these facts are um, possible evidence of the origin of mitochondria. It's believed that they are the result of an ancient endosymbiotic event. Um, and this was first proposed, uh, this theory, by a scientist named Lynn Margulies. Uh, some other things you should know about the mitochondria. Uh, we have the matrix. This is the fluid, which fills the inside of the mitochondria. The uh, Krebs cycle occurs inside of the matrix. Uh, finally, the electron transport chain is occurring within the membrane of the mitochondria. Uh, I'll also mention the cristae. These are folds within the inner membrane of the mitochondria, which give more surface area. Let's do a quick comparison of aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration means that we're using air. We're using oxygen specifically. This is the Krebs cycle. Uh, depending on the cell type, the aerobic respiration processes can produce between 36 and 38 ATP molecules for every one glucose that's being broken down. That's a really high return. Whereas anaerobic respiration is occurring when oxygen is not available. These are fermentation processes. Here, there's a lot less ATP that's being produced. It's only two ATP molecules. Those are actually produced during a process called glycolysis. Please remember that Anaerobic means that there is no oxygen being used for the process. Anaerobic without air, without oxygen. Whether or not oxygen is available, all glucose molecules are going to be broken down by a process called glycolysis. This will actually produce two copies of a molecule called pyruvic acid. This is a three carbon molecule. Um, it's important to note here that there are two ATPs originally being used to drive this process. The process will then generate two ATPs for the production of each pyruvic acid. So the overall net gain for the cell is two additional ATP molecules which can be used to drive any cell process that requires energy. If a cell does not have oxygen available to it, it will then carry out a fermentation process in order to get rid of the pyruvic acid that was being produced in glycolysis. This type of fermentation can occur in your cells. This is lactic acid fermentation. It does require NADH molecules. Um, and the lactic acid itself will need to be processed by other um, cell processes as well to get rid of these byproducts or these waste products. Uh, this is significant also for food production. Lactic acid fermentation is what's used to produce yogurt. Uh, sauerkraut and kimchi are also produced by lactic acid fermentation. Some cells, not yours, some cells can actually carry out alcoholic fermentation. Uh, so this will take the pyruvic acid remove a carbon along with oxygen, a CO2 molecule, to produce a two-carbon molecule called ethanol. Uh, 
yeast are very good at this fermentation process and this is what's responsible for producing beer or wine. Here's a slide which provides a summary of the Krebs cycle. This is aerobic respiration. I've specifically left out detailed information about all the intermediate molecules. If you're in an AP course, you would want to uh, do some additional research. For the level of uh, student that I'm gearing this for, we don't need to bog down in those details. Let's pick out some key things we need to know about the Krebs cycle uh, first. At the end of glycolysis, there's that pyruvic acid, a three carbon molecule. That can be modified um, by enzymes to produce two carbon molecules that can enter into the Krebs cycle. Now in the Krebs cycle, we're producing some important things. Carbon dioxide, this is where it comes from. That's that waste substance that you're exhaling every time that you breathe out. We're also producing NADH molecules. We're producing FADH2 molecules. We'll take a closer look at their importance in a future slide. Also, we're generating some ATP as the Krebs cycle is functioning. So this is an additional source of ATP molecules, which again can be used to power cell activities that require energy. Now we'll take a look at something called the electron transport chain. So this is the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Now in the inner space, there's um, NADH uh, molecules which are going to lose their hydrogen atoms forming NAD plus molecules. Now those hydrogens are going to get pumped out through the membrane and the arrows and lines here are indicating that they're actually electrons basically being passed like hot potato game. Uh, but the important thing to know is that these hydrogen ions are all winding up in this outside of the membrane space. Um, this will create a high concentration gradient. Lots of hydrogen ions outside of this membrane. They can then travel through a membrane protein called ATPase. As they do that, they're allowing a process to occur which is going to generate ATP molecules. Um, so this is the source of the majority of ATP molecules that are a result of the Krebs cycle. Remember, NADH was produced by the Krebs cycle along with waste carbon dioxide, uh, but that NADH molecule is generating these hydrogen ions that are associated with the electron transport chain, the electrons being passed in between these proteins, proteins in the membrane, sorry, and we're producing this high concentration of hydrogen ions that when they flow through this channel protein, that process can produce lots and lots and lots of ATP. One of our in-class activities will be to perform an experiment where we analyze the um, effects of exercise on carbon dioxide production as we carry out cellular respiration. I thought it would be interesting to look at a breakdown of uh, some different races in track and field to get a feel for what component of the race is aerobic, what component is anaerobic. Uh, so starting with short races, we can see that uh, Usain Bolt holds the world record in the 100 meters at 9.58 seconds. 20% uh, of that race is aerobic, whereas 80% of the energy systems applied to that race are um, anaerobic processes. Uh, we can see in the 200 meters the numbers start to shift a little bit. Now it's 30% aerobic, 70% um, anaerobic. Um, on the upper scale of this we can see that if we're running a 1500 meters or 3000 meters that we're now um, nearly 80% aerobic or nearly 90% aerobic as far as the energy systems being used by the athlete's body to provide the energy they need to compete in that race. All right, we're all finished. That was a quick look at the process of cellular respiration. Bye, everybody.